You about to record this as a podcast? Uh, uh, duh. Okay. Damn, I'm like too built for that. Hey, this is D from Fellow Corner Podcast. Come join us on the corner to talk about entertainment, news, and all the above. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Fellow Corner Podcast to get the latest on each episode. We'll be waiting. Let's discuss. Hey, man, I ain't going to hold y'all up. We coming to 2020. This is a new year. This is a new you. This is a new me. So if you haven't done already, man, get you another form of income in your pocket, my baby. Go ahead. Start recording the podcast, man. Shout out to Anchor, man. So don't pussyfoot around because it's free. There's creation tools to allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. So you can be easily heard on, you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, all that other stupid dumb shit that niggas like to listen to motherfucking podcasts. And you can make some cheese from that podcast with no minimum listenership. So... Everything you need to make a podcast is all in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. You punk bitch. You about to record this as a podcast? Uh, uh, duh. Okay. Damn, I'm like too built for that. My new bitch. My new bitch. My new bitch. You know this. We stand, one issue, get clap. Hey, nigga, turn around, it's a one way. A fortunate events where I stay. Deep scars all on my face. All my bitches exit with grace. Old bitches got upstage. Crabs in the barrel of a chump change. Hating flagrant, but mundane. Style harder, they was unchanged. Chasing you into the sunset. You like a target in the gun range. Peace of mind cost a piece of you. Maybe we'll be there one day. Playing Wide Cliff in the White House. Assassinated on Monday. My new bitch. You know this. Official, we stand. One issue, get clap. My no bitch, jet black. You know this, if fact. Official, we stand. One issue, get clap. bag like really come like for real mm-hmm. you know we gonna we gonna split this bitch evenly like a pie okay you okay me? you know when you know i ain't i ain't gonna you know uh what they say should situation right right or diddy the situation <laughs> be <laughs> like we getting video. 50 mil big and you getting two and you get two <laughs> nigga type shit yeah but how dare i man yeah man let me introduce some motherfucking pie, man. Shout out to the motherfucking drug table talk, man. We introduced it last week. Okay. You know, as the new name for the the Meech and Spiff podcast. Mm-hmm. You know, we are currently the drug table talk podcast with Meech. And Spiff. You feel me? I do. Listen, man. My nigga Spiff, you know, besides um, you know, the story time that he left out, you know, shout out to Viva La White Girl. Shout out, we dropped that. We definitely did. Drop yeah, we that dropped it. Scene. We dropped yeah. it. Because the the reason why I did that is because, you know, when me, Brando and Solo sat down, you know, unfortunately, you know, you had to you had to go make some make some ends and shit. Yeah, I had to go to work, you know. It yeah. happens. But I feel like, you know, the people should, you know, still hear you. Mm-hmm. So I was like, fuck it, let me go ahead and put this little story time out Man, I appreciate that, man Definitely the greatest executive producer I've ever met, you know Man, I'm trying, man, I'm trying But, you know, like I always say, man, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night Or wherever the fuck y'all niggas like to listen to this shit And I appreciate all 13 of y'all niggas for tuning in to the motherfucking drug table talk With Meech and Spiff You punk bitch you funky bitch, you. 
and shit. And as y'all can tell, you know, usually when we do our intro and shit, you know, it's you know got my got my dog Mila on the bitch like. You about to record this as a podcast? Uh, duh, you know. Uh, duh. Shout out to Jay Mila, Shout man. Shout out to happy, Jay Mila. Happy belated birthday, man. Happy belated, on, man. On the third and shit. We still thinking about you, but you clearly not thinking about us. Not what at it is, all. What it is. Nigga never answered the fucking phone for nobody never. and shit. But, you know, my I was I was uh, blessed to, you know, receive, a, you know, a song, you know, from my nigga Solo. And of course, it was produced by my nigga Brando. Hey, turn up. You know the one that was on the podcast last week and shit. You know I asked. You know, you know what they say: blessings come down. What they say: bless. What do you say? Prayers go, go up. up. Blessings, blessings come, come down, down and you shit. Feel me? You know I asked niggas like, man, can can we get like a little intro music to the pod? Nigga, no more than seventy two hours later, my nigga Solo hit me like, yo, produced by by Brando, nigga. I'm on it. Say no more, man. It's a fact. Say no more. But before we get into the motherfucking pie, man, you know, like I like we always like to say, man, what's what's on Spiff's drug table today, man? What we what we got on this bitch, Spiff? Man, we got some tequila that'll go unnamed. Uh, <laughs> some <laughs> some essential water, of course. You know, pH Gotta stay balance. Hydrated. A couple of iPhones. The mics, of course, as Trey, and the pack of six, courtesy of me. And, you know, all our just regular equipment, for real. It's not too much drug shit on there. We got, a, like, a little um, weed pen, too. But yeah. that's about it, though. Shout out to the weed like, pen. You know, since this cold voice shit happened, my drug dealers are very unreliable right now. So, just bear with us. Just yeah, bear man. With us. And, and please, man, you know, we call this shit the drug tape because my nigga Spiff usually have an assortment of drugs, man. Mm-hmm. Just because they not on this table, ain't ain't telling what's on his other tables that he got in this motherfucking That's what bitch. I'm saying, or in my system at the current moment. <laughs> Facts, man. But, you know, y'all niggas stay tuned because, you know, what we plan to do is that, you know, you know. Currently, my nigga Spiff is, you know, in the middle of moving from his current residence to a new residence. Yes. And so, you know, you know, when we get to the new spadiggity, you know, just, just, you know, pay attention and just know that, you know, more content is coming out soon. Definitely, so, definitely. You know, if you like to, you know, share with the people, man, what, what can they expect from the new crib and what you got going on, Spiff? Lord? Um, just better quality. Uh. You know, more entertaining stories. I'm just, I, I got a lot, you feel me, as far as the spiff souls go. I got a lot more, you feel me? Mm-hmm. But just more guests, you feel me, more interesting people, you know, they got things going for themselves outside of the norm, you feel me? A lot Thanks. of entrepreneurs, niggas getting money, you feel me? Just better entertainment to bring our listeners, all 13 of y'all, you feel me? Facts, man. Cause you know what, you know we had a we had a couple guests like lined up for the podcast and mm-hmm. shit, and I feel like you know creatively we need to be in a in a different environment, a better open and more comfortable environment and yeah. shit. And even and even you Spiff said like you know what, you know before we have another guest on here, you know let's get to let's get the spot situated, mm-hmm. you know let's get the couches and the mic set up before you know we jump into the yeah. you know having more guests on the pod and shit. Shit could wait, man. We done took breaks before. We done took like damn near a six month break before, if not Facts. longer. You feel me? So yeah. they could wait, wait it out for the rest of this month. You feel me? Yeah. But, you know, I'm just excited for you to move into a um, a better space, mm-hmm. you know, a more creative space, more open. And I feel like with that, it's going to just just breed just more ideas for us to to prosper with whatever the fuck we got going on. You feel me? Definitely. I appreciate it. I'm excited, too, man. It's been a long time coming, man. But, um, yeah, man, niggas got to get out here, you know, get a, a, a decent creative space, man, and Get the YouTube popping off like how we want to, and you know Facts. all the other stuff. Cause I need a bag, a big bag. A yeah, bag, man. You feel me? And if you haven't already, make sure y'all niggas go and subscribe to the YouTube page. You know, meet your Spiff on YouTube and shit. And um, you know, make sure y'all follow us on the Meet and Spiff Pie Instagram page because I know we talked about it um, a couple pods ago. Excuse me, but um, I haven't really brought it up. 
as of recent, but we still going to, um, you know, have the whole giveaway type shit going on coming soon. You know, we still trying to work out, like, the whole details with that shit. But just know, man, we got the whole giveaway coming out soon. So just make sure y'all follow us on YouTube and on the motherfucking Instagram page to, to make sure that y'all stay current with everything that the fuck we got going on whole time. Funky bitch, you. Ooh. But you know what? I don't know how to introduce to... You know, the people, this, you know, this subject, this topic that in which we got going on. So I'm going to just get all the way straight into it. And I want to ask you a question. Like, like, what do you think about, you know, the idea of, like, open relationships? Mm, it just depends on if you're about that life or not, for real. Because niggas be trying to talk crazy, like. In my experience, niggas be like, especially like dudes with the hoes and shit, like, oh, it's whatever. I got all these hoes, nigga. You can fuck whoever. I don't give a fuck money of a bitch. It's young money. Mm -hmm. Weezy FF stands for fuck, (laughs) fuck, whatever the fuck. But yeah, they be on that type of shit. You feel me? But then you fuck a nigga bitch and then, or niggas be butthurt. Niggas be hurt as fuck. So, you know what I'm saying? If you about that life and you can handle it, that's cool, but. Know yourself and don't try to fit into what's popular right now. Like, like I feel like in our generation, not loving these hoes became very, very popular. But I've been not loving these hoes for, like, ever. Mm. You know what? If, you know, my idea of, like, open relationships and shit is like, like this, man. Mm-hmm. It's like an understanding between two grown individuals right. that know what the fuck they want. But at the same time, they have one common goal at the end. It's like, you know, you and you and your shorty, you know, y'all can be doing the whole, you know, Michelle Obama, Barack mm-hmm. Obama. You know, we all fighting for one type of goal. But in the meantime, a nigga need to get a little dick sucked. A little, a little, a little something <laughs> on the side. You know, something on the side just to keep, just to keep my creative juices flowing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Definitely. I mean, I'll say this, like, I'm not the one for an open relationship. Like, no, you really? can't just fuck my bitch and I'm going to be cool with it because I want her to be at no. Nah. If you locked in, lock in with a nigga, you feel me? Mm-hmm. I prefer the traditional way of uh, an open relationship. I just prefer to cheat. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> like, can we stop being so... Progressive and forward and hybrid, like I just oh, want to cheat in peace, nigga. <laughs> like, come on, bro. I'm not trying to be like, oh yeah, this is my bitch, but she could fuck whoever. No, nigga, if you my bitch, you're my bitch. Yeah, but just me? just know that I'm mm-hmm. cheating. <laughs> yeah, just know. But also, the why in your bitch is silent. Don't let that shit go over your heads, man. We ain't gonna say it no more. But continue. <laughs> but. You know what? What I feel like as far as like open relationships, in my in my opinion, is that am I open to it? No, because I'm a selfish type of niggas. You know what I'm saying, man? Like I can't even fathom the thought of another nigga penetrating my my shorty and shit. No, I'm killing everybody. Off, bill, my <laughs> nigga. Like like that whole relationship open relationship, you know, complex is, like, different. It takes a different way of thinking. Now, that don't knock me from, like, niggas that actually do it. Like, mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with it. Like, you know, if you got a partner that's, you know, intra, you know, that's interested. Hey, man, peep gang. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? Shit, when, when I was trying to get this podcast off the ground with Spiff, man, we had a lot of questions, man. Like, how do I record an episode? How do I get my show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all the other places people like to listen? Also, how do I how do I make money off this podcast, man? Man, peep gang, the answer to every one of those questions is really simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now Anchor can match you with great sponsors, too, so you can get paid to podcast, man. Secure the bag. Listen, 
man, me and me and Spiff, man, we ain't we ain't come here to get paid off this, man. We just wanted everyone to enjoy, you know, and listen to our convos and stories about, you know, our upbringing. But why not get paid for it? You know what I'm talking about? So, if you always wanted to start a podcast, make money doing it, go to anchor.fm slash start. Again, that's anchor.fm slash start to join me, Spiff, and the diverse community of podcasts are already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. And guess what, man? We can't wait to hear your podcast, man. So, hey, that's it. But yeah, man, if you got a, a partner that that's interested in having that, you know, whole open relationship, man, that's that's between you and your spouse, you feel me? I feel like, you know, let's just say let's just say you you, you know, you sit your shorty down and be like, you know, this is this is the plan. I'm with you, you with me, this is a forever thing, you feel me? But from time to time, man, I need to I need to sew my royal loads. I need to go ahead and, and, and dip my penis in those forbidden waters. And in the meantime of me doing that, baby girl, you can get your whole bag blew out. What you think about that? I think that's a no go, bro. Like the only nigga you gonna be fucking is me. You feel me? And this is my personal preference, bro. And if I stumble across a shorty that's like into that type of shit, then I'm going to just tell her straight up. Like, I ain't going for it either. You know, you can fuck with your boy. You can't. You feel me? It is what it is. Facts, man. You know what? And and I say all of that to say this, man, because, you know, one of the, the most, you know, uh, what I... Sh- what I should say, like the hot topics out here in the streets today is that, you know, my nigga August Alcina, you know, sat down with a- 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 Angela McGee. Angela McGee. <laughs> Angela McGee. <laughs> Angela McGee. Like my nigga, <laughs> like my nigga Webby say, man. Nigga, they had a whole like little sit down, you know, him, you know, just kind of like, you know, just telling everybody about, you know, him. And his relationship with Jada Pinka Smith. And before we get into that shit, man, I feel like, and please, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Spiff. Mm-hmm. But I feel like that whole, like, swingers type, you know, them niggas like the party type. I feel like that's been, you know, spoke about the 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 Smith Pinkus for the or the Pinkus Smiths for for quite a while. They've been getting down with the Thriller for years, <laughs> bro. For years, That's a fact. bro. But oh, sips, Heradura. <laughs> but let me ask you this, man. Do you think my nigga Will is out here slaying hoes? All the time He's probably fucking a bitch right now As we're having this podcast Do you think That Jada Is out here Slanging niggas I do I do Judgment free zone If that's what you into Yeah Whatever Let me say this Do you think That they have come together And had a mutual agreement that I'm a slang dick And I'm a slang some pussy on the side but whatever the fuck we got going on, it's between us. Definitely. I think that's why they marriage works, you feel me? Mm. Like, Will Smith is arguably one of the biggest names in Hollywood, you feel me? Thanks. So, you know hoes all over the globe is trying to throw them that cooch, so. One thing that I've noticed a lot on, like, social media is that people cannot fathom the idea of open relationships. I mean, I get it, you feel me? I don't see why it's that big of a debate. Like, either it's for you or it's not. Like, certain people are cool, like, you feel me? Certain people just like to fuck, you feel me? Yeah. That's cool. Certain people like the exclusivity. Some some people like, you know, just having that one person that they can share that experience with. And, and, you know, I think in Will and Jada's, you know, instance, it kind of draws them closer because she probably don't see that nigga. All but the time. I feel like uh, 
a thing that's like kind of like unspoken with like the whole Will and Jada shit is that Jada, she has like really like pronounced her love for like Tupac and shit, mm-hmm. and like in which I just seen like plenty of interviews in which she said like you know Tupac is like her first love, like her soulmate, this type of shit. And, you know, unfortunately, my nigga was smeared off the earth. But she found another soulmate, which was Will. Mm -hmm. And what I feel like is that that opened her to, 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 to accept, you know, love outside of, you know, your significant other. If it's me, you breaking it down very, very, very detailed. You feel me? If I'm in Will's place, I feel some type of way, but I'd be like, "Oh well, that nigga dead now, so <laughs> right. he's got to deal with me." You feel me? Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, the way you broke it down, I mean, it makes sense. You feel me? You can accept love from other people, but still have, you know what I'm saying? That genuine love intact. You feel me? It's tricky. I don't know the thought process behind it. You feel me or anything like that. But right. it's all about communication at the end of the day. And if your partner cool with it, then let it be. Let it be. You feel me? But you know what? As I as I look back on my life and shit, and you know, and I'm pretty sure, you know, my nigga Spiff, he got the hoes and shit. You know, when we when we deal with different types of women and shit, de- depending on you know what time and. You know, the moment in which we, we got these women, you know, is different because I feel like we both been on the share end of being a woman's first love. I right. feel like we both been on the end of, you know, mending, you know, these whores heart after they got their fucking heart broken and shit. I put it like this. Any bitch that told me that I was her first love is pregnant right now or have children. You feel me? That means she done moved on and, and found somebody that she... That she that I feel like she loved. And I've used this analogy a lot, you know, and I'm going to use it again. I don't got no social media, so shit, you can't persecute me unless you call my phone. But Facts. dating women in this generation or this day and age or at the age we are now is like buying a used car, you feel me? Mm. Certified pre on. Facts. Like, you know, you, you getting a, a, a decent car, you feel me? You satisfied with it, but you don't know what the, the previous owners did with that. That nigga could have been dogging that bitch. You don't know dogging what, what the previous owners put, you know, the, 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 the car through, you feel me? You have to make it work for you, you feel me? Facts. That's just it, you feel me? I don't know. What you done did with your last thing and how you done fucked your head up. But at the end of the day, I got to repair the damages and then get you on my schedule type shit. You feel That's me? a fact. And vice versa. You feel me? So That's a fact. But I just want to kind of carry on with the whole um, August Alcina, Jada Pinkett shit is, is that it's, it's certain ways how you go about a situation because... I feel as if that, you know, him having to sit down with Angela Yee and giving a whole tell-all type of, you know, I'm going to just air out everybody's business and I just need to get this shit up off my chest, off my bird-ass chest, you feel me? I feel like that shit really don't need to be said. Like, you can you can talk about it in your music and shit, mm-hmm. but what I feel as if is that when you sit down and have a conversation with people, you kind of doing the most. I bet you he drops some music in the next two, three weeks. Spiff, before I... Before, <laughs> he already dropped the album talking okay. about the shit. Okay. So, like... But let me ask you this, man. Do you think he was probably manipulated in this type of in this type of relationship that he had with Jada Pinkett? And before you answer that shit, let me just you know give you a you know the car, the whole facts on this bitch. Excuse me, you know Jada, I ain't, I don't mean to call you a hoe. <laughs> you know what I mean? But let me just let me just give you a, a little bit of information on this shit. You know, me doing my half-ass internet research as I do. You know, what they call me, Spiff. You know, young Diane Sawyer out here in these streets. But, you know, from what I've seen is that, you know, he was introduced to the family, 
you know, via Jaden. You know, they was cool to stand the third. And then I heard, you know, conflicting information saying that, you know, the first time he kind of got around the family is via the BT Awards. And I find that kind of hard to believe because I know he took Jada to the BT Awards on some, you know, some friendly shit. But I feel like you would have been introduced in a different type of way. So I'm going to just roll with the Jaden shit. Okay. So he was introduced via, you know, Jaden. And I heard they took plenty of trips together, you know, via, you know, they going to Hawaii, chilling, kicking it with the family, you know, come to find out that, you know, with him hanging with the family, you know, he, uh, he had a perky issue, man. I heard he was on a yeah. I heard he was on an assortment of drugs. You know he got mental mental illness issues, and you know he was looking for you know uh, a way of healing and such. And I take that all around full circle to whereas you know Jada, she kind of just. Kind of stepped into that role, like you know, as a, a nurturing mother as as she is, and you know, her coming around and wrapping her arms and legs uh, around this this young stallion, and I feel like she was like, you know what, I find this young man attractive, and and I wanna I wanna I wanna help him, I want to console him at this time of need, and why not? Put the pussy on him. Am I wrong, Spiff, or am I just thinking crazy? You're not thinking crazy. I mean, it seems like it would develop like that. You feel me? Mm hmm. And he got the fuck in that bitch at mm. the end of the day. Right? From what they say. I mean, shit, it is what it is. If Will and Jada got that type of open relationship, he already knows what's going on. You got the young, you know, the young muskrat coming out here, you feel mm-hmm. me? Nigga, that's what young niggas do. They fuck bitches, you feel me? And, uh, I mean, what was the end result with this? Was he trying to say that he was taken advantage of, or? Well, let me, let me, let me ask you this shit, Spiff. Mm-hmm. You know, because from what I've taken, you know, from that interview with, with him and Angela Lee is that, you know, he did have a battle with, you know, addiction. You know, he was feeling, you know, some type of, you know, self-conscious type of feelings towards himself. And what 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 Jada did is, you know, pull the young man up out of, you know, out of that, that depression that he had. Mm-hmm. And made him feel better about himself by putting the pussy on him. It is what it is. Sometimes some old hoes put the pussy on you, bro. It be like that. But I've never came in contact with a old bitch that didn't really like, hey, this what it is. This is strictly what it is. And anything mm-hmm. outside of that, you on your own. So I feel like Jada kind of broke it down to him like that as well. So, But one thing that I took away from that situation is that it was um, a mutual conversation that was had. Mm-hmm. It was like, all right, I'm August Alcina at this moment. Excuse me, um, miss, we fucking, but at the end of the day, let me, let me go talk to your old man and just get the okay with, with, with Big Willie style, you feel me? Mm-hmm. And from what he said is that, you know, he had a conversation with, with Will Smith himself, you know, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, that nigga. We know that nigga. Come on now. We know that nigga. He said he had a conversation with him, and, and Big Willie Style was like, hey, psh, stab on her. I give you the <laughs> okay. I want to ask you, like, Spiff, like, how you think that conversation went between August and Will Smith, man? I would love to have been the fly on the wall that day, but Come I feel like it was kind of like, Kind of like how we having the conversation right now, though. Like, when you step to the OGs, you feel me? They ain't turning up. They ain't doing the most. They going to hear you out. You feel me? 
And that's going to be it. I feel like on August, I've seen the part. He probably came, you know, with his chest puffed out at first. You think so? I think I feel like he did, you feel me? And I feel like Will Smith was like, look, first of all, nigga, I'm rich. <laughs> kind. <laughs> rich as dog shit. <laughs> rich as dog shit. Second off, nigga, untuck your chest, nigga. <laughs> Unpuff that bitch, you feel Come me? Come on now. Like, look, we done had this shit going on when you were still swimming in your daddy nutsack. You feel Come me? Come on now. So, nigga, do your thing, you feel me? Understand this is this, you feel me? And outside of these boundaries, you're on your own, you feel me? But go ahead, you feel me? What's mine is yours. I think I think you're not too far off with the with the verbal, though, Spiff. Mm-hmm. I feel like it went a little like this, like, um, it, it, excuse me, Mr. Smith, <laughs> but I think I find your wife attractive, and I kind of like... Um, want a piece of that ass, and he was like, "Nigga, I've been fucking hoes forever, my <laughs> nigga. Go ahead, just don't, don't just don't wild out, don't nigga. wild out, don't don't skeet in the bitch, nigga. Yeah, don't skeet on it. Yeah. You know, by all means, do what you do, but mm-hmm. you don't don't wild out too crazy. Don't have my shorty out here looking wild. Right, but it's been it's been rumors for for quite a quite a amount of time that they was already into that type of shit anyway. And and I feel like what me and Spiff is like echoing to the people is that is that we don't judge anybody for doing whatever the fuck they want to do but behind closed doors and shit. Mm-hmm. I feel like whatever y'all niggas do, y'all niggas do it, man. Do what you gotta do. Yeah, cause nigga, like my nigga Spiff said, like he doesn't Particularly, you know, um, you know, is into like the whole open relationship shit. That nigga just gonna cheat and just fuck bitches on the side. Pretty much. Mm. Pretty much. Was but, he like hurt about that shit? Like in the interview? Because I haven't seen it yet. Like was he, he was definitely hurt about it, man. Because. Not as soon as he, like, talked about the whole situation, like, like right after that, you know, it, it different, like, press release came out from both uh, Jada and Will publicists, like, oh, that shit is completely false, false, so, like, that shit never happened, but... Like I said, man, this shit been going on for years. Like everybody been talking about them being swingers and 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 all types of nasty behavior between the two for years, man. Wherever there's smoke, damn for sure gonna be some fire, my baby. This is the thing, bro. On August I've seen the part or any man that's our age. Dealing with an older woman You have not experienced heartache or, angu- heartache or anguish Or just perspective On bitches Until you got an old bitch That break your heart Absolutely You ain't That's the that's the last piece of the puzzle To my young men Nigga Have an older bitch Break your heart Nigga Or do you some type of way You don't feel Nigga That's the last piece Once you get that And get over it Nigga you invincible Nigga Man Let me ask you this man and shout out to all the women that's you know been raped and abused by by older gentlemen and and men and and things of such. Do you think that he was taken advantage of in this situation? No. Based off, based well, hold on, okay. stop. before before you answer, and I know you already answered already. Okay. But based off, you know him, you know being mentally unstable. And him being, you know, heavy pert. Do you think that he was probably taken advantage of in this situation? The thing you got to know and you already know about me. I do a lot of drugs. Mm. Mentally, I'm either here or I'm not there. You feel me? So all the issues that he dealing with, like, that's your boy. I'm just not famous. So if I could get over that shit and be like, well, maybe that bitch did have a point. Or maybe I learned my lesson. Maybe I shouldn't, you know, bite off more than I could chew. Mm-hmm. No, that nigga will be fucking fine. That nigga was not taking advantage of. <laughs> you just caught you an old bitch. You caught feelings. I have two. And shit. 
You know, they let you down however they let you down, and then you move on. Yeah. It is what it is. It's the last piece of the puzzle, fellas. Black men, listen to what I'm telling you, bro. Listen to what I'm fucking telling you. Once you encounter that old bitch that do you greasy, can't another bitch break you. Can't another bitch on this earth break you. I'm telling you. After you find that one, it's a wrap, bro. Man, I feel like, and and I'm I'm pretty much echoing your sentiments is that, like, once a nigga really get that first heartbreak in him, to that to that point where as a nigga be down and and and, and stripped to his to his bare nuts. You know that that's the type of shit that mold niggas to to who they are today. Like I know I know that point in myself, whereas I was, you know, broken down to that point. And I'm pretty sure you can reflect on that shit and and and, and feel that that type of energy. But let me let me ask you this shit, Spiff. What if, what if this is this nigga first time being in that position. He just gonna have to get the fuck over it. Don't nobody give a fuck. I'm telling you personally, I don't give a fuck, bro. Damn. Everybody go through what they gotta go through. And when they going through it, don't nobody give a fuck. So, shit, get over it, nigga. You famous, nigga. And you like skin and shit, nigga. Like, fuck other be, bitches. There'll be <laughs> other bitches, nigga. Like, you a musician, nigga. Get the fuck over it. That was somebody else, bitch, anyway. And you knew that the whole time, so... It's only, uh, like, that nigga, I mean, Jada is not about to leave for Will Smith because your bag ain't big enough. Your bag ain't big enough. Nigga, baby. that nigga, Will Smith, kind of, like, run black Hollywood for real, for real. That's and a fact. And some of white Hollywood, you feel me? That's a fact. Nigga's established, bro. He got superstar kids, nigga. Come on, now. We, you, you had your first little run, you feel me? Hoes was interested and shit like that. The fans was interested. And then I've never seen you. Other than that, and you pop up back with this shit. Yeah. Shut the fuck up, get over it, make your money, and fuck these hoes. What Damn. would my nigga Bow Wow have to say about this, nigga? What would Bow Wow say at a time is, like this? And this is Bow Wow. What Bow would Wow Nick, been fucking hoes. I'm telling you, what would Nick Cannon say at a time like Nick this? Nick Cannon nigga? been fucking hoes. Come on, like sometimes, like shit happens, bro. Like you ain't experienced nothing that regular people don't experience. Now, we don't get on the whole talk show special and shit and be like, oh, this celebrity ass bitch, dog. No, nigga, you sound like a bitch right now, nigga. Yeah. Strap your nuts on, go fuck however many bitches it takes to get over that bitch, and then move on, nigga. Make your music and, and do whatever you gotta do, nigga. That's a fact, man. I'm blaming a bitch because you get the fuck out of here, nigga. Come on now. You gotta I don't... come harder than that, cousin. <laughs> And I and I and I think back, you know, I feel like we don't we don't look at, you know, certain women and, and try to blame them for, mm-hmm. you know, for a lot of hurt and trauma that they may have caused upon us and shit. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Spiff, and I'm a, I'm gonna keep saying this. I feel like I can speak for the both of us is that, you know, it's growing pains, man. Yeah. You know, it's it's lessons, it's 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 type of shit that we learned is just, just being us, you know, just being a young man, just trying to trying to move in this type of environment, man. Mm-hmm. You know, we never you know, we never fought the woman for for being who she is. No. You know, it just take us to just try to try to learn from that situation and uh, and to apply it into our other situation that we got going forward. Exactly. It is what it is. That nigga be all right, man. Stop with the red table talks or the Angela Lee lip service or whatever the fuck you got going on. Nigga, tell your homeboys, get it out, get drunk, fuck some hoes, nigga. And then that's it, nigga. That's what regular niggas do. Yeah, that's a fact, man. And and that goes back to, you know, some shit that I watched, you know, recently. Shout out to my nigga Vlad TV and shit. I don't know if... If you uh you know might have seen some of the interviews that he had as a recent, but he had like another mafia kind of like mob, you know associate you know on the podcast as a recent, and he had that nigga Gianni Russo. Okay. And in which he said that you know he fucked like Marilyn Monroe when he was like sixteen years old and shit. Easy work. You know I'm pretty sure like you know at that time you know in which. 
you know, he grew up in, nobody would have believed him. But the type of pussy that she put on him is like, that shit is forever, you know, changing, man. That <laughs> shit is different. Life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, you know, we we never fought the, the man. You know, we never fought the woman. It's just like, you know, you just live your life, nigga. And it is what it is. That shit is that shit is crazy, man. Cause I feel like a lot of women out here is fucking predators on the low. <laughs> I was telling you, bro. Definitely predators. Predators on the low. And that's what I really want to ask is that is she a predator for like preying on this young nigga spiff? And I already know what you about to say, but is she a predator for preying on this young nigga, man? Absolutely not. Like, absolutely oh. fucking not. Because I feel like if we was both in that situation, you know, given, you know, we in a, a environment of of a, a Jada Pinkett, you know, that type of situation, you know, she slide down on you, Spiff, and be like, yo, I'm trying to put this pussy on you. What you trying to do? What you saying to that bitch, cuz? I'm fucking that bitch. Period. She said, you know, you, me, and, me and Big Willie style, man, we got a type of open, you know, relationship type shit. You know, I just need you to come over here and lay that pipe from time to time. What you saying? First of all, I'm going to be the nigga to know that that's fucking Will Smith, first and foremost. Second of all, I'm going to know, I'm going to be the type of nigga to know that I'm only going to hit this bitch maybe two to three times. You feel me? On that, then it's going to be done. I'm going to go by my way because I'm going to still be like. Nigga, I fuck Jada Smith, bro. Come on now, I feel like Jada we all Pinkett Smith. Nigga, we all try to fuck her when she was in that bitch, you know, giving giving that uh that pussy to my nigga Kane, my nigga, while my man was in jail and shit, and my nigga in jail gave her the go ahead. Shout out to uh, Minister Society. Is that the movie? I could be off. You right on crib. Man, that nigga on some goofy shit, period. That's how I feel, man. It ain't no situation or perspective you could, like, really break down for me where he not on no goofy shit. And Fact. it happens, nigga. I done been on some goofy shit for some bitches. We all have, but it is what it is. You live and you learn. Man, can I, can I introduce a, another topic based off, you know, what you said, man? Because I feel like it's... It's a lot of goofy shit that's, like, going on out here in these streets and shit. And I feel like it's only right that we sit down and decode this shit, man. What you think? By all means, do what you got to do. Spiff Lord, man. You know, as of recent, man, and what I can really say is that over the last few years, man, I have grown and I've you know, learn to accept myself and and just try to live in this whole social media type of world that we live in is that a lot of shit don't even need a response. A lot of shit don't need your know, time a day, your 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 effort, your, your breath, they get your fucking thumbs when you type it on your motherfucking phone and shit. I feel like a lot of this shit is like goofy as fuck. And what I've noticed is that with us being in quarantine and shit is that a lot of people have a lot of fucking free time on their hands. And this is not to, you know, go forward with, you know, making sure their family is straight, making sure their finances is straight, making sure that they, they loved ones is straight. It's just to beef on motherfucking Twitter and Instagram, cuz. I ain't into that shit. You know how I feel about that uh, social media shit as of now. Man, I'm so tired of lame niggas having a voice, cuz. And what I've noticed a lot recently is that, you know, meek and academics, cuz, been going back and forth. On motherfucking Twitter For the last week And that shit is pissing me The fuck off Because I feel like If you call yourself 
somewhat of a street nigga. Yeah. And for for academics to call himself somewhat of a a, a journalist or a reporter or whoever, there's checks and balances when it comes to that type of shit. And, you know, before I introduce that subject, I want to ask you, like, what give these lame niggas a voice at the this time? Internet, man, the fucking internet, bro. Like, for every person that's a fan, it's a person that's a hater, bro. For people to consume themselves with these celebrities' lives is, like, beyond me, bro. Like, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Shay room, whatever the fuck, like nigga, it's always no matter how good or bad you doing, it's always a, a group of people that want to hear the negative about you, especially when you getting praise. You feel me? So thanks. That gives that nigga a voice. It had it not been for that, and the nigga running his mouth like a bitch, there would be no academics. He's not no true hip hop journalist, bro. He's really not, bro. I think it's a regular nigga at the end of the day. Yeah, and his mama basement, probably not, since Complex gave him a, a bag or whatever the case may be. But still, though, like, stop it, bro. That nigga is lame, bro. Like, energy, whatever type of energy you, you create, it feed like, it's, it's energy that matches that, that feeds off of it. So, if you got positive energy, you're going to have positive energy feeding off of that. And if you got negative energy, you got negative energy feeding off of that. People are miserable, bro. So the yeah. fact that that nigga has a voice is not speaking only towards him and what he do is just speaking towards the fan base. That's what I would pay attention to. I'm not concerned about why this nigga is relevant or somewhat relevant. I'm concerned about the people that is making this nigga relevant. Facts. That's a fucking fact, man. Because, you know, when I when I see this exchanges on, you know, Twitter and everything, and, like, I expect more from Meek. You know, shout out to my nigga Meek Luther King and shit. I'm you know, I, I, I expect more from a nigga that, that been on the inside, that, that did time and shit, and we was always, like, free Meek and shit. For you to allow a nigga... Like academics get under your skin, man. It just tells you that you need more people, more, more one hundred people around you, my nigga. Exactly. You surrounding yourself with billionaires. You worried about what this nigga think in his basement. I mean, like at the end of the day, maybe he said some shit that triggered him. But at the end of the day, bro, you you the bigger person in this scenario That's in a every way, shape, or fact. form, bro. You you feeding to that nigga fan base. Let that nigga talk. That's all he do is talk, bro. That's, That's a it. fact. Like, and I and I feel like I can speak for the both both of us, man. That nigga act been a corn. Been that nigga don't hell. go outside. He don't. He don't be outside. Like even even when 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 him and uh Joe Budden got in got into it with you know uh the Migos and shit. That nigga was sitting up there looking like he shot in his motherfucking pants. <laughs> uh, fucking fucking chipmunk face ass nigga. Like you not about that life. Exactly. And we all understand that you're not about that life, cuz. But don't go out here and 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 uh and and try to and Antagonize these these lions and bears, my nigga, because you gonna get your ass fucking beat in the ass, man. Yeah, you gonna get your ass beat the fuck up and or killed. And that's on Crip. Tell me, like, like chill the fuck out. You need to know when to to win and lose your battles, man. You need to understand that. Let me ask you this, man. Give me a little background. Like, what was actually said? I mean, from from what I've seen is that that nigga me just kind of just 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 kind of said like, man, we need to cancel, you know, academics and shit. We need to cancel that nigga. He got niggas in jail. He's speaking on street shit that don't apply to him. And then when niggas try to press him, <laughs> I wash my hands with that. 
So Meek is don't a, don't speak on shit that that don't apply to you. So Meek is the antagonist in this situation. You can say. Okay. You can say. You can say. Or is it protagonist? I don't know. Protagonist, antagonist. It don't even fucking matter. It's just the principalities, like my niggas said right. on Friday, man. <laughs> I feel where Meek coming from though. Like, like why the fuck is we? You know, giving, you know, inside and exclusive information to this nigga just so he can put on YouTube and he telling everybody business, getting niggas arrested and shit. Like, yeah, nigga, like, stop it, nigga. I fuck with me, man. Stop. My only thing about that whole situation is that when when you got a lame nigga talking to you, cuz, mm-hmm. sometimes it don't even offer a response to that type of shit. Sometimes you don't... You, you ain't even get a nigga time of day. Yeah. Nigga, what did he say when that whole... Uh, what's the nigga that was writing for Drake and shit? Uh, I can't remember his name, but I don't know who you talk about. But you know. <laughs> yeah, I know who you talk about. You know. Something Woods or something like that. Some Woods. I don't know. <laughs> Roy Woods. I don't know. Nigga, not Roy Woods. <laughs> I like the nigga song. But, some, nigga. Some nigga. In nigga, the OBO that camp. that nigga, mm-hmm. man, just know like that nigga. When 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 my nigga Meek was uh, beefing with Drizzy and shit, mm-hmm. what they do? Catch the nigga that was out here writing the raps, and what they do? Whoop his ass. <laughs> whoop, whoops crazy on him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we gotta understand. Like this nigga academics do not come outside. He's not gonna give niggas the. The, the benefit of a doubt that he's gonna be out there talking that same shit that he talk via Twitter. He's not tough at all. Y'all let this chump monk face ass nigga talk crazy on nigga, on y'all niggas via Twitter. Come on now, nah, nigga. That nigga's not about that fucking life. I ain't no game banging ass nigga, but I put this shit on crib. Free my nigga, baby, rock. Mm. Yeah, it's what it is. Pussy niggas always gonna be pussy niggas. That's on gangsters, cuz. The funny shit is that he did the same shit with Freddie Gibbs. No, now you getting two street street. And that nigga a vice lord for <laughs> real. That nigga's a straight vice lord for real, man. Like, you need to relax, cuz. It's okay. You want to put out, you know, your your YouTube videos and and such, man. But you need to know that when you leave the house, you gotta look both ways before you cross the street, cause you bounce to drizz down. It's certain niggas you shouldn't even be commenting on just off the fact that you know they really about that life. Like somebody gonna hurt that young man, bro, and. I'm not going to be surprised. I'm not even going to bat an eye when that nigga get hurt. I'm going to be like, ah, well, that nigga kind of had to come to him. Mm. I hate to say it. I'd rather him than me because, cause like I said before, man, that, that whole Joe Budden situation when my nigga Joe Budden had the situation with the Migos and, and Quavo and Offset and Takeoff was taking off their motherfucking uh, Silk Shirt song. Mm-hmm. And, and it, was, it was about to tee off on Doggy Bone. Mm-hmm. My nigga had the motherfucking Alvin and Chuck mom Who face. Who said I wasn't on Bad and Boots? <laughs> Who said I wasn't on Bad and Boots? My nigga had a chip on face and was like, eh. Okay, I'm out of here, tight nigga. Fuck is wrong with you, cuz? What's wrong with him? I don't know, Spiff, man. I don't, I don't get these these internet niggas these days, cuz. I really don't either, bro. I've been off the internet for a good month and a half, bro. I feel so refreshed, bro. I'm not... Worried about the wrong shit I'm not feeling like I'm playing catch up Or none of that shit I don't give a fuck What the fuck y'all niggas doing What y'all just cop What bottle y'all just pop 
with y'all hoes at, who y'all fucking with, none of that shit, bro. I'm just on me, bro. That brings so much more energy towards me, bro. It's crazy, but it That's is a fact. Is. I'm on my own time. Nobody else's. I think that's the the best way to live is that, you know, you just you on your own type of time, man. Ain't worrying about what the fuck niggas got to say or what bitches got to do and everything like that. It's just you know you're just taking day by day and just living it, man. I'm just doing my thing, bro. Just you know, we really focus on this pod. You feel me? Focus on making more money. And uh, that's that's it. And just the niggas that's always been around, they gonna stay around. They gonna stay around. Period. Nigga, I ain't gotta, I ain't gotta show niggas what the fuck I'm doing. Like I don't have to do that, bro. I ain't gotta keep up with what another nigga doing. I'm just me, bro. If you wanna lock in with me, nigga, niggas know where I be at, nigga. I'm at work or here, nigga. Absolutely. That's it. Or at my motherfucking mama house, <laughs> stealing her motherfucking groceries. That's a fact, man. Man. I think this is a, a a a good time to say that niggas need to live within their means. Mm-hmm. Niggas need to know, you know, what their limitations are. Yes. Niggas need to accept what the fuck they got going on, man. Exactly. Because I feel like at this time, whereas we living in the whole coronavirus type of environment and. And, and people buying up all the fucking in they hoe. Me and my nigga Spiff can't even get a niggas, fucking bro. Can't can't even get a bottle of Neho because y'all niggas didn't bought it all. Nigga, we really drink. We really buy bottles every time we link up with just us or our homeboys or whoever, bro. Like, and y'all niggas ain't got y'all a little taste. I can't wait till motherfucking the end of July when y'all niggas ain't can't on unemployment no wait. more, bro. Cause y'all buying up all the good shit, nigga. Niggas knowing y'all wouldn't even have that shit, bro. Remember this, nigga. Remember, Remember this that. time when wh- wh- when is that extra six hundred on the unemployment going away? July what? Nigga, the end of July, nigga, thirty first or thirtieth. I don't know how many days. After in July. Labor Day, nigga, or is that Memorial Day? It don't fucking matter. The next ah. holiday after the next fucking holiday come up. Remember this shit right now. Remember that energy. I'm popping out with all the bottles, nigga. I'm about to see you there with me. That's on gangsters, cuz. No, oh, niggas ain't used to shit. <laughs> niggas really ain't used to shit, cuz, for real. And that shit fucking sad, man. Because a lot of these niggas was drinking motherfucking extra smooth while we was out here drinking all the fucking Don Julio niggas and shit. Niggas was drinking that Amsterdam. Niggas was definitely you drinking a lot, a lot of Amsterdam. Mm-hmm. But. Niggas get a fucking couple dollars in their pocket. Niggas start. It's hot outside. It's hot outside. Stop it, nigga. It's crazy, man. I don't like niggas, man. I don't, nigga. Mm. Let me ask you this. Because I want to know, like, how you feel as far as, like, the whole Black Lives matter movement because i was at my people's crib yesterday which was the the fourth of july and shit my mom tried to try to put some you know put a story on me about you know uh, a white woman pulling out a gun on some black people and shit and she was like you know what you think about this situation man i want to know your insight on that and i told her i was like I can't lie, I'm burnt out on that shit. Mm-hmm. I don't want to hear no more about that shit. That shit been weighing on my soul too crazy, man. That shit is very intense. I feel like if you really bought that Black Lives Matter movement, like, keep pushing, keep fighting the fight, but it just goes back into social media. Everything don't got to be on social media. Everything don't got to be the topic of discussion. If you know, you know. Niggas been doing this shit. I don't... I done, I done met motherfuckers that's been doing that shit that's done dedicate their whole lives to that shit. Facts. When we was swimming around, our daddy nutsack, they was on the front lines, you feel me? And they haven't moved from the front lines. I think it's good that, you know, it has got the media attention that it deserves, but keep on pushing. But you ain't got to be like every five seconds, like Black Lives Matter. Black Lives mm-hmm. Matter, nigga, if you bought that shit, 
keep on continuing to fight, recruit more people that's about to fight. There's black people. If we're not necessarily about that shit, you still got to put it on in some way, shape, or form. Facts, man. I've And I feel like, and, you know, with us having conversation off the pod and shit, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's a lot of radical people out here that's, that's pushing a whole, you know, narrative about Black Lives Matters and and just doing the fucking most when we know they not necessarily about that life and shit, mm-hmm. but they going crazy on your social media. Mm-hmm. Social media really got a lot of niggas fucked up, man. It really do. Speaking on that shit, and this is kind of besides the point, but this is like with the point. Of course, I always talk about my boss and shit. Facts. And, um, Whatever happened, we was dealing with some type of disgruntled employee. We called him in the office, HR and shit, and I'm talking my shit, you feel me? And I'm like, this was about to happen to you because I ain't going for it. I'm no nonsense when it comes to that job. I don't give a fuck. Black, white, Asian, Puerto Rican, Muslim, Indian, Iraqi, and Afghanistan, y'all niggas, it don't matter. If you come up into my shit and fuck up, I'm going to fuck you up. That's your ass, Mr. Postman. She was just like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then he stink, too. Like, uh, she was like, white people are gross. It's like, that's why I only date black men. This no bitch shit. Is white and shaped like a motherfucking Tasmanian devil. Ah. You feel me? I'm like, huh, like, why do you keep on mentioning that you only exclusively date black men? That makes you even more, like, racist. Right, like, come on, bro. Like, we we get it. You 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 got you dating a black man and shit like that. But your kids are white, so you didn't always as fool. You feel me? Like, get the fuck out of here, bro. Like, stop trying to white people. Stop trying to prove points to black people. Like, if if whatever race you are, and you know we got the BLM movement popping off. You feel me? Like. We we know what it is, nigga. We don't think all white people or any ethnicity is racist or it. It's all about the energy, bro. Like, every black person not the same, just like how every, you know, Indian or, you feel me, Native American or motherfucking Portuguese, Spaniard, they not all the same, Thanks. bro. So, like, it's about people, bro. Like, stop it. Y'all pressing the matter to too much. I'm, like, seeing is believing, bro. You got to show me, bro. That's yeah. it. That's it. Show me what you got. But yeah, though, that bitch was like, white people are disgusting. That's why only they black men. Like, bitch, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. You don't even know what the fuck we been through. That's what I'm saying. You done pulled out 40 bands for a nigga that, you, that got a wife. Her boyfriend got a wife. Oh, boy. So y'all can start a business. She and that bitch, nigga. I done sent this bitch to Hutch, nigga. I, and this is some shit I've been meaning to tell you, but we talking about it on the pod. Say less. This bitch, I guess that nigga bought her a rolly or some of some sort. Got the rolly on. Mm-hmm. And, and voice those. Um, you know, not that big shit. You know, the woman little little thirty six, little thirty six white. You feel Crazy. probably like ten bands, but it's a rolly. Whatever, ten bands. Is 10 it look bands. good though. It look good. So this bitch is buying this nigga like a gold metal plated. Chain, she gonna flood that bitch with diamonds, and then had a rose gold diamond chain. You feel me? Mm. With a little elephant or something, that symbolized something and shit like that. She like, I don't know nobody that can do that shit. You feel me? I'd have been all over in Detroit. I'm like, bitch, just go to Hutch, bro. Like, or go to Greenfield Plaza. Shout out to my niggas at Golden Sun. Yeah, Golden Sun or Hutch. She was like, I'm about to. She like, right. and then she came back next day. I talked to Hutch this and the third, <sighs> and she the number that she spit out to me was just like mind boggling. Like, mm. you willing to spend this much money? You already are pulling out money out to four hundred one k, but you willing to spend this much money on a nigga that got a wife? And you already done gave this nigga forty bands. I'm like, uh, like my nigga, uh, Cameron said, you know, in that one song. You know, it's like kind of like insert. When the penis ejaculate all in your braid. Yeah, that shit is tough, though. But that's what that bitch get, though. But whatever. She met that nigga off plenty of fish anyway, so I don't give a fuck. But I hate to get sidetracked and shit. I'm rambling and shit like that. But, you know, it is what it is, man. 
white people stop doing the most, black people continue to fight, internet stop, people that's on the internet stop broadcasting everything you doing, bro, it's not that And if you're not tough, you're not tough, nigga. And if you're not tough, you're not fucking tough, bro. Just lay back in the cut, man, sit in that pocket, and niggas will see, regardless. And that's on crib. I ain't even, I don't, I don't even gang bang. I'm just gang affiliated. Exactly, it's a difference, nigga. That's all gangsters, bitch. Spiff Lord. Yes, sir. This is a drug table talk. It is. And I can't lie, man. I'm a little perturbed. Why is that? Because I hate niggas, man. I also hate niggas. Niggas rub me the wrong way, cuz. All damn day, I do what I do when I do when I do it. And when I look at, you know, situations whereas, you know, I be feeling like niggas is well off. A nigga got, you know, other things to worry about. And they weren't about really minute Minuscule type of things and shit That shit really pisses me off It definitely do Because I feel like if I was in the same You know situation that In which they are in And I look at the the situations in which I'm currently in My main goal is to Make Myself with Rich Make sure that my lady is taken care of to make sure my son is is taken care of to make sure you and your family is taken care of. And for a nigga to worry about what the fuck another nigga opinion is about himself. Right. That's the type of shit that pissed me the fuck off every day. If you take a step back and just look at niggas, bro. That shit weak as fuck, bro Like, that shit is weak as fuck I don't give a fuck, bro I'm doing me, nigga You don't walk through my shoes You don't take the necessary steps To get the money that I get You feel me? You don't deal with the same type of shit So, if you got more than me Congratulations If you got less than me You will get there You feel me? But at the end of the day The main thing of me I don't give a fuck, nigga. We all locked in with me, nigga. I'm all about the I, nigga, and the people that I rock with. That's if my fact. niggas got it, I got it. If That's I don't got fact. it, if my niggas don't got it, we got it. You feel me? It don't matter, nigga. And even if we don't got it, we going to find a way to we get it. We going to find a fucking way, bro. Niggas is too grown, bro. Like, niggas is pushing 30, bro. I don't got time to be keeping up with the Joneses or... Trying to, you know, be all in the mix with niggas and shit. Deem myself, like, popular or in the mix or known as Detroit slang would prove that the word is. Like, I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. Nigga, I done saying helly niggas. Helly niggas, you know, put themselves in dangerous situations because they trying to keep up with shit or trying to be in the mix for what, bro? Is it worth it? Them same bitches gonna be around. They all fucking. Them bottles gonna be around. You feel me? That money, you feel me, that you flash, and that's all you got? Say that, bro. Do something, nigga. I done seen so many niggas had the fresh fit on, 20 grand in their pocket, no car. Mm. No crib. Talk about it. The icy chains, nothing. No established credit, you feel me? Who they calling? Hey, Spiff, pull up on me. Pull up on me, bro. You think I could do this? You think I could do that? You got a credit card, don't you? Your credit score decent, ain't it? You got a crib, don't you? You got two cars, don't you? I do, but guess where I'm not at? Hmm. Where you at, nigga? Sometimes you're going to have to sit it down in the crib, bro. Sometimes you're going to tell your niggas, like, yeah, not tonight, bro. I ain't got it. Sometimes you got to tell that bitch, like, no, I can't do that for you. You feel Hmm. me? I can't. Sometimes you got to do it. You feel me? Prioritize, bro. That's what niggas feel to realize. It's prioritize, nigga. Not not every week, 
weekend is is for you to turn to up. to turn up to, what, to what? throw a thousand in the strip club to 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 wild out how you feel like you should post to wild out man. When you called me today and you was like, I'm trying to make sure you at the crib. What I tell you? I'm here until further notice. Until, until I need to go to work. Until I need to go to fucking work. I ain't fucking playing, nigga. I'm in the crib, nigga. I got shit I need to do, nigga. That's a fact. And even if I don't got shit I need to do, nigga, I'm in the crib because I could be saving that money, nigga. I get drunk on my own. I That's got a few fact. bitches I could call and I could just vibe with. I don't got to be around the bitches as long as I got me a few bitches <laughs> that I can rotate between. You can do that. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, grown, nigga, nigga. at the end of the day, it's an option. It's an option, nigga. I ain't got shit to prove, nigga. Yeah, you fresh and shit. You ain't got nothing me and my niggas ain't never had. You feel me? The $1,000 pants is the $500 sneakers and shit like that. You feel me? That's nothing, nigga. Why you bragging about that Benz and you ain't <laughs> you used, used to, to toys? toys. Stop it, nigga. Free my nigga Street Lord wine. Man, we, 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 what we bragging on, bro? Ain't shit to brag about, nigga. I got to work 100 times harder right now, nigga. That's how I feel. I think that's one thing about myself that I, you know, at times I forget is that it's a lot of niggas that can't do the same shit I can do. You can't. And what I need to realize is that it's a lot of shit that is things that I can do mm-hmm. or things that I cannot do for myself mm-hmm. that other niggas can because niggas don't have the same responsibilities that exactly. I have. It's a certain amount of my account right now. Niggas will be content with having but when I'm my mom, when my bank account gets to a certain level, I'm, I'm tucked broke. in. I'm broke, nigga. I'm, I'm broke. tucked in. I'm broke, baby. I'm broke as fuck, nigga. Come on. Stop. What my nigga money, Mitch say? Mitch say, nigga, I'm broke, baby. And I ain't bragging on the shit that I got because I feel like I'm supposed to have that. You feel me? That's a fact. I ain't bragging on the shit that I'm supposed to, that I'm about to get because I feel like I should have been had that. You know what? I think it is that. We didn't got to a some a certain time in in our life, and I feel like you know with our OGs and and and, and niggas that that we have grown accustomed to, it's like nigga, you supposed to have a certain amount in your bank account. Right. It's 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 certain it's certain responsibilities that you gotta do when you, when you taking care of a, of of a woman and shit. Yeah. That type of way. Because what you what you might might seem as of a uh, let's just say is as broke. You a poor man's rich. Exactly. You know what I'm talking about. What you may have seem as comfortable is another man's poor. But I feel as if. You know, and I'm only speaking for us, you know, in this room right now. We don't get complacent with what we got going on right no, now. I want more of that shit. We want more. We strive for more. And I feel like every year, man, we 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 grow into that point whereas I got more than the, the previous year before, but I want more on top of that. But that's just us, Biff. It's just that's us. just us. Less is more. At the top, it's just us, nigga. Yeah. Less is more, and there's plenty of us, nigga. Mm. Sips bullshit. <laughs> mm. I got a lot more that I want to say on this podcast, but... I feel like we didn't we didn't we didn't left enough jewels today to Definitely. to hold y'all niggas over for a week, man. What you think about that, Spiff Lord? I I I think that is perfect, man. So I shout out to all thirteen of the Meech and Spiff Drug Table Talk listeners, man, and I appreciate y'all niggas for listening. Always tuning in. Always showing love. Giving feedback when it's due. And before I shake about it, this bitch. 
Spit flow, you got any last words you like to say before we shake? No, nah, man. And like I always say, man, I love y'all niggas. I appreciate all 13 of y'all niggas for always showing love, giving feedback when it's due. And tune in to the next motherfucking podcast. And Spiff. Yes, sir. Can I call a one? Yes, you definitely can. You funky dog head bitch. <laughs> and that's the motherfucking Meet Your Spiff podcast, you dusty bitch. Yerp.